We wanted to get an economist to run their eye this morning over housing policy, as it was announced on Sunday by the Liberal Party. Martin North is the principal of Digital Finance Analytics. Martin North, good morning to you. Hello. Martin, what do you make of Scott Morrison's plan to reduce the deposit for first home buyers uh, required down to 5% and, and help get rid of uh, mortgage lenders' insurance as well? Is it a good idea for the country? Well, I think... Politically, it's probably quite astute because it really does underscore uh, a targeting of a particular demographic within the, um, uh, you know, w- within the election. But from an economic perspective, I'm quite concerned about it because all these first-time buyer incentives, and I know first-time buyers want to get into the market, but all of these first-time buyer incentives tend to have, firstly, uh, a, a rise in the price of property. So all the boats in the harbour go up. So that's the first issue. But the second one... Where we are in the cycle with very high house prices and potentially beginning now to adjust downward. Now, I know Hobart's behind the rest of the country, but there's a real risk if you've only got 5% uh, deposit there uh, and, and prices fall, then essentially you're going to be in negative equity. And now I know that you know, basically the government is sitting on that, <laughs> that next um, tranche down with, you know, above the banks, as it were, but it actually creates significant issues for people. So I, I think we have to be really, really careful. We're enticing people into the market when the debt is very high and home prices are very high and when the trajectory looks to me to be weakening rather than strengthening. In terms and, of house prices. and so you might end up in a negative equity situation. In other words, you've borrowed more money um, than your house is actually worth. You're repaying a loan that's larger than the value of your property. Yes, indeed. And across the country, uh, around 10% of households today are actually in negative equity. Negative equity is a real problem. It's a paper problem unless you try to sell, but it also has a very important impact on how people think about their finances and they tend to not spend as much and they perhaps try to pay the loan down faster. Um, So negative equity is is a real concern. I guess the other point is that, um, you know, it's really important that people have the discipline of saving for a deposit. And uh, my research suggests that where people have not had that discipline, for example, when they get money from their parents to to get into the market, um, they actually tend to get into more difficulty later in any case because they haven't had the discipline of doing it. So making it hyper easy to get into the market does have some downside. Wasn't the headline of Scott Morrison's thing that uh, conference that it takes nine years to save a deposit for the average uh, first home buyer and that is too long? Are you saying you don't think that nine years of saving is too long to put together your deposit on a first home? Well, what I'm saying is home prices are way too high. And the reason they're way too high is because we've had more than a decade of too loose lending. Um, The regulators were asleep at the wheel and the banks were essentially just lending handover fits. The Royal Commission showed that. So the problem we now have is we have very high home prices. And the question is, do we actually try and solve the problem by trying to keep home prices high by making it ever easier to get into the market? Or do we actually deal with the underlying issue, which we've had too much debt in the system, we've had too high home prices? And, you know, if home prices do adjust down, it will become easier later to get into the market. It's tricky, and, you know, there are no simple policy solutions because of where we come from. But remember that we have some of the highest debt in the world for households. We've got more households than ever in difficulty in servicing those mortgages at the moment. So just trying to perpetuate the current model for another four, five, six years, I think it's just going to create a bigger problem later. We need a different way of thinking about it. Let's just uncouple, Martin, and I don't know how comfortable you'll be doing this, but let's uncouple the Tasmanian interest with the national interest for a moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Tasmanian market has uh, sort of operates on a on a later cycle. Hobart's property prices may have plateaued, may be falling a little bit, but the rest of the state um, still offers value and capital growth, according to what we're hearing in many places. Um, could this be a good policy for Tasmania? Well, certainly the Tasmanian, Tasmanian market is behaving differently, and part of that is because there's been a massive amount of interstate investment in Tasmania because, of course, property prices in Tasmania relative to the rest of the country were very low, and they've gone up more than 25% over the last three years. So that's been a, you know, a, pr- a pretty good thing. The question, of course, is, is it likely to continue? And, yeah, there are definitely first-time buyers in Tasmania who are struggling. And I know that over the weekend, the, um, uh, the government there extended the first builder grant for another year to try and actually continue the um, another support. Uh, the question we've got to ask ourselves is how much support is appropriate and where does it lead us if we continue to do it? Um, so, yeah, I, I reckon that from a Tasmanian perspective, there's probably more um, advantage to 
the new policy at the moment, but the question is where will home prices go from here? Will they really continue to go sideways or up, or will they start following the rest of the country? Remember that I'm arguing it's credit and credit availability which is driving home prices, and credit is tighter now than it was, so the chances are home prices will start to fall. Um, What happens with your bank when your house goes into negative equity? Don't they call you five minutes later and tell you that they're jacking up your, uh, your repayments, whether you like it or not? Yeah, so there are a few things. Firstly, uh, all the mortgage contracts allow them to change the interest rate if, if they believe that the risk has changed. Um, there is actually also the, you know, the, the call that they could make to you to say, oh, we want an extra repayment. Actually, what tends to happen is that banks can sit on this for a limited amount of time, assuming that uh, people continue to make those mortgage repayments. And that's the point. If you're an owner-occupied borrower uh, and you go into negative equity and you keep making your repayments, that's not too much of an issue. And, you know, experience from Ireland and the UK says that even after 10 years, you may still will be in negative equity, but you may still have the property, just mean you can't move. But if you're a property investor, then that's a big deal because essentially now you're not making anything on the property from the capital perspective and your rental streams may also be constrained. So it's more likely to be the investment sector where the banks get twitchy sooner. And in some cases over in Western Australia, where we've had negative equity now for a number of years, banks have started to foreclose. Indeed, in Darwin too, where I've got a lot of friends who are um, battling under uh, under the sort of the, the difficulty of owning a house that uh, that is worth less than what they paid for. Um, I just wanted to test a, a liberal line that's being run heavily at the moment in the context of Labor's negative gearing policy. Um, they say if Labor introduced their negative gearing policy, so ending it for uh, for established housing and letting it only apply to new builds, that house prices will go down and that rents will go up. Do you agree with that sentiment? No, I don't. So I've done some very detailed modelling on this, and that is just uh, over the top. So essentially there would be a very, very slight impact, but only slight. Here's the reason why. It's grandfathered, right? So existing investment properties are not impacted. There's only new ones. And so there will be a slightly stronger focus on investors buying new constructed, uh, you know, rather than actually existing. The, the, the sort of the wriggle room in the argument is, well, if I'm an existing investor on an established property and I then try to sell, maybe I'm going to have less opportunity to sell. But they're less likely to sell because they've got this negative equity uh, grandfathered in, firstly. And secondly, um, the, the fact is at the moment that very few investors are actually wanting to buy investment property because, of course, the um, whole investment cycle is now on the downside. In fact, investment property isn't returning for more than half of uh, investors. So actually, it's quite a good time to do it because the investment cycle is where it is. And we've had this um, negative gearing um, thing in for a generation. It's absolutely distorted the property sector and property market, made home prices higher than they should have been. And now is the time to tackle it, I think, because, like I said, we have to go strategically back to a a more sensible level of home prices. Negative gearing was part of the problem, not part of the solution. It's been good to talk to you this morning, Martin. Thanks for coming on. Good to talk to you. Martin North, Principal of Digital Financial Analytics. You're on Mornings Around Tasmania.